if you're like me, you own one of these fantastic DeWalt 13 inch wide planers. Uh, and uh, you might have an issue sometimes with this little circuit breaker constantly tripping um, for various reasons. There's a couple different reasons we'll talk about that. Um, number one, odds are you're running the planer, which has three blades, and they're dull. They're going to be the full length blades, uh, the high speed steel blades. They may be dull when they're dull. Uh, you're going to be the motor's going to be bearing down. The motor is going to get overworked. It's going to get heated, and it's going to cause this circuit breaker to trip. Well, if you keep on doing that, these circuit breakers are only meant to trip a few hundred times. I can't remember before they constantly start to fail, uh, which means even if you're running a really thin board through, maybe some soft pine or maple um, or poplar or something like that, and it still trips. Um, I was having that issue. I'd be running just the, the, a really narrow piece of pine through there, um, and it would cause it to trip, even if I was only barely taking off, you know, a 30 seconds of an inch uh, per pass or something like that. Well, that meant that my blades were dull, and I was running it so long and so hot and kept tripping this and kept pushing it in and then kept running it and then kept tripping and pushing it in over and over again, wearing this circuit breaker out to the point to where... It just trips constantly, um, even on the lightest of jobs. Um, well, the fix for that is a couple things. First off, you've got to replace this. That's the number one thing. If this is tripping constantly, it's just going to continue to trip. Um, I'll show you how to do that. You can get the part on Amazon. I'll put a link in there below for it. It's not super expensive at all. Um, and it's fairly simple and quick to replace. Third, or second, I'm sorry, uh, is you need to replace your blades. Um, the number one reason this is failing is because the motor's getting overheated and doing extra hard work because those blades are dull and it's gonna keep doing that. Even if you put a new one in, it's gonna start tripping. And then over time, this is gonna trip and trip and just keep doing it over and over and you'll have to replace it again. So for what I, uh, what I did was I replaced this and then replaced my blades and I had no more issues. I eventually upgraded to a Shelix helical blade which I definitely recommend. I'll show you here. This is a DW735 planer uh, type one motor. Make sure that you have it unplugged, even though there's a safety mechanism in there and you can use this, ta this uh, the handy little star bit that they put in there for you to remove the lid. Um, your, bla your blades are gonna be underneath this. You remove one, two, three of those. And then as this shows, you have a couple arrows there you need to line up. You lift it this up from this end up carefully watching your hands underneath there because those even though they're dull for wood they'll still be sharp enough to cut you pull this out and then you'll have your uh cylinder head or whatever you want to call it in there um that'll have the three blades on there and you're going to change the blades that are in there carefully um i don't have a video for that unfortunately because i swapped this over to the helical and so now i use a helical uh by shelix but let me show you real quick so the difference between the three blade system that it comes with which is a good system, and the helical is the three blade system has three long wide blades, as you probably know. Um, and every time one of those goes around, it's taking a wide, 13 inch wide cut on a piece of wood. If you're doing a full piece, that's gonna bear down. If you're doing hard wood, it's gonna bear down on that motor, um, trying to cut a full piece of wood out of that as you go around, as it spins around. Um, so the helical, especially, and even if they're sharp, um, especially if they're dull. So when you take it off, the helical has multiple blades on there. Uh, I think there's 40 on here all the way. I think it's about 10 or 12 across, and there's four bands. Each one of these is turned at a curve. As you can see, they're at an angle. So as it cuts the wood, it's cutting from this end over, similar to you would with a hand planer, like a chisel or a hand planer. You wouldn't cut straight dead on, catching all the wood at once. You would start at an angle and cut it. And since these are spaced out, you're only cutting that little teeny bit at a time on the board. Um, so it's a lot quieter, first off. It's a lot smoother cut. It's a lot quicker, cleaner, and easier on the motor. Um, so this is, once we change out that piece, this was the thing I did next so that I didn't have to keep constantly changing out high-speed steel blades. These are carbide, and you can they're four-sided, so you can actually use this side when it gets dull. You can just turn them 
over to this side and you get up to four uses out of each one. And since they're carbide, they last longer. Now they're a little bit more brittle. So if you put a piece through and it's got a nail, it's probably gonna chip it, but that's the beauty. You just turn that one blade that got chipped. You don't have to replace a whole high speed steel blade um, that's gonna do that. So this is, I think it's like $350, $400. In my opinion, I use my machine every single day. It's definitely worth it. Um, it saves me a lot of time, a lot of energy, uh, a lot of work. Um, it, it, it just cuts 10 times better, smoother, cleaner, quieter, everything. Uh, so it's really worth it if you can. I'll put a link in there for that as well. But if not, you're going to just want to make sure that you replace those high speed, high speed steel blades the moment they get dull. Once it starts bearing down and dragging down on that motor, it's not good for the motor. And it certainly isn't good for that circuit breaker as well. But now that I've talked a ton and bored you to death and you probably skipped through all that. I'm going to go ahead and swap this out. I'm going to show you how to replace this circuit breaker because it's pretty quick and easy uh, to do. So first off, you need to take out, there are one, two, three screws up here. They're just in plastic, so be careful when you're taking them out. We've got down here on the front, we've got three screws here. You got a large screw under there. Carefully set them aside. Um, that's the nice thing about the DeWalt is you got that little bowl up top kind of right here where I leave some screws sometimes when I'm working on it. That's a nice handy dandy little thing. Then you've got two Allen wrenches you're gonna need. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what size, but you got a smaller one and then a slightly larger one. The slightly larger one goes on the handle for the shifting the speed. And the faceplate comes off. And again, you might want to spray down in there um, for that. So here's your circuit breaker right there. You've got one wire coming from the circuit breaker to the power and then from the circuit breaker back up inside to another junction there. So you're going to want to take these two off. Okay. Take them both off of there. Mine looks like burnt a little bit. You might want to replace that um, if it's burnt actually like badly where it's not going to make a right connection. Uh, but that again, that comes from running it non-stop and just keep press resetting that, that brake. The only thing to do is take this little nut off and then it'll pull out. I'm going to set it down, my phone down for a moment while uh, I do that. Well, uh, that comes off there just like that. That little uh, circuit breaker piece comes off kind of like a washer and then you can pull out and wiggle out the circuit breaker. Um, well, one of the things I noticed though while I'm in here is I forgot to unplug it. Even though I warned everybody to turn it off, unplug it before you work on it. Um, I hit the switch by accident on the front here and it came on. That's not supposed to happen because there's a safety switch right here that when the cover is off, it's not supposed to work. So I was like, well, that's not right. That's dangerous. And I could have easily had a tool down there, or my fingers in there, but I accident and hurt myself really bad. And I found another reason why you don't want to keep tripping that breaker. It overloaded, it overloaded that switch and made it heat up. And these two wires at the time, I don't know if you can see if I can get that, were touching and they melted together bypassing that switch. That's crazy. Another reason why you don't want to keep tripping your circuit breaker because the circuit breaker gets hot and melts stuff. Um, that's how it works. It gets warm. And when it gets warm, it trips, it keeps tripping. It's going to keep getting warm and warm and hotter and hotter. So my little switch in here, even though it now works that I disconnected this, there's bare wire showing. So I'm going to have to replace that. Uh, or at least cover it and the same with that and then this is even up burnt up a little bit so i'll need to replace that so when you're changing this out make sure that that's not happening already and that that's not burning or melting and that you don't have something melting here as well um very dangerous very dangerous uh in multiple ways so let's continue here with what we were trying to do 
I'm talking and I'm probably boring the crud out of you. So we're gonna pop one and two off and then put the new one in. Okay, so when putting the new one in, it has two connections. It says, let's see if I can get that to focus. It says load and line. So your load is the power coming in and line is going out. The power coming in is gonna come from this black one that's coming from that switch. That way, when this is activated with the lid on, power comes in to the load side and then goes out to the line side when this is depressed into your power switch giving you power. So you wanna make sure that you got that done correctly. Again, otherwise this isn't gonna work or it'll probably fail. So uh, now everything goes in reverse. We're gonna put it back in, put all the screws back on, and then fire it up.